to Wild Air Safari this morning. My name is Mark, with Cat on camera, and Craig back in final control. Beautiful sky, isn't it? Wow. Well, we didn't start in a place that I really wanted to because I knew there was going to be a nice sunrise. But as I got onto Zoe's Road, and we're right here at the junction of Zoe's Road and Wurtela Access Road, lion tracks coming up Zoe's Road and turning up, going down towards the lodge. So I'm going to actually head out onto the open area, quarantine. We're going to head back. I thought maybe we'd do this road, but no, I think the best thing is to follow those tracks and see where they go to. We might have a cat on Western Gauri. There's a beautiful mist as well down in the valley. Actually a very, very, very nice setting here at Juma Game Reserve this morning. Uh, see if anybody's out yet. Morning stations, anyone out yet? Morning Henry, I'm Gala on Zoe's Road, coming on to Weir's Access, heading towards the lodge. You headed east or Nkonzo headed east? I am, I'll tell you when I lose it. At the moment, I'm just trying to find out where it went to at Gallagher Shortcut Junction. Yeah, I took uh, another one. Could be my father, but it looks like December was uh, the lodge, but yeah, I didn't look at the photos there. It was in the area when I left. And that would be nice to get the photo. Okay, copied. Yeah, so far I can only find a condo for one of my phones. Excuse me. Did she, there's a giraffe that walked down here, but our cat didn't. I'm wondering if anybody heard anything. Damn last night. Whoa. He's got the track there. Yep. Public making a noise in the bushes here. Look at that sky. I didn't see these tracks when I came out. I think I was in too much of a hurry to get down to Zoe's Road. I wanted to see the sunrise from Zoe's. Yeah, there are the tracks there, heading straight into the lodge. We're going to have to go all the way around to the dam. Sandy, how fresh are the lion tracks? They are rather fresh. Early this morning. Heard of Impala here, they obviously didn't. Weren't affected by a lioness walking through. Young lioness by the looks of things. <coughs> Now if she carried on east, on this road that goes down towards Wuertela, Wuertela Access Road, we would have taken her straight past the dam, over the dam wall and up to Central Road. 
Morning, Conconi. See the cat last night? You count your numbers, especially little ones. I see five. Five little ones are there, so that's good. Cat missed the wildebeest. If the cat was going to get a wildebeest, would have got one of the little ones more than likely. Oh my, what a beautiful sky. Just, let's see if we can get it through the trees there. if there was an elephant or something. So we're going to get another view of it when we go down Warburg's Nest Road and then we'll see some of that mist in the valley but I've got to get on these tracks before we lose this cat Stance of this impala in front of us. I wonder what she's, she's seeing coming. This uh, impala in front of us. interested in something, obviously not interested enough. Morning children. Oh, she's got blood, she got caught by something. Blood under her neck. Are you okay lady? Probably running but Bump, bump something like a stick. Looking, seeing that little nursery group that I saw the other day of new lambs. Hello, little boy. Oh, and there's some kudu down there as well. A couple of kudu bulls. Okay, well we can come back and look for all these lovely animals a bit later. As soon as I know where this lion has gone. Lioness, rather. Hello Phyllis. I want you to know who gave me the new feather. Which one? That one? Or that one? This one, I don't know. Where it, it was on Cheetah Cut Line the other day. The big one on my left. I think it's a an eagle owl. I'm not sure. It's a, something big. My inner tracks. Other one on my right hand side is a starling. I think Tara must have found it yesterday and she left it in the car. The possession is nine tenths of the law. Or something to that effect. Pardon? Finders keepers, indeed. Until I get back to camp, then I'll give it back to it.
hyena tracks, giraffe tracks. The amount of giraffe activity, the looks of things. Look how beautiful this looks. This looks like a, like a view over the Amazon or some other such tropical jungle. Just have a quick look at that. Just get that sky and the dead, dead tree. camera will let us see what it's filming and these moments that I'm stopping just to glance at the sky I'm also listening I want to hear some alarm calls I want to hear something that tells me similar to those Franklin shouting it tells me that something is happening quite a strange movement of the sky the cloud is racing is it there's a a layer of cloud racing to the southeast. Looks like it's going to make it overcast. Oh, we'll have to see. Come on. This is not going to be easy, is it? Oh, we yeah, quickly, if we can. What we have is a failure to communicate. A failure between the computer and the monitors. They're not communicating properly. And that means that we keep losing picture on our monitors. It looks steady now. No, it's gone. But mainly that means that Cat can't see what she's filming and that makes it a bit of a problem. Is that wrong? That doesn't go like this. Mm. The top one, never been there like before. It's just feeding the battery back into the battery. You just close the circuit of the battery. Okay, well we gotta go. We'll try and live with what we got for now.
calling. Buffaloes. When buffaloes in the water at six o'clock in the morning, you know it's going to be a hot day. I think. Let me just see. Uh -oh. She would have come down here. Please make. Sh Please be here, lioness. Yep. There we go. And she must have crossed the damn wall. Smell her now. There's a spot there, there was a spot where I could smell her. Playing with the Hessian again. Now the big question: Did she come out this side, or did she go down the drainage line? That's another question. It should be answered at the top of the hill. Cracker. We often see lion on their own. Surely they'd be more effective in a group when hunting. Cracker. Any animal that is a gregarious animal will have a time when it will be on its own. This is maybe only one day out of a 15 year lifespan that this lioness is alone. We don't know that she's alone. She's walking alone. The fact that she's walking alone means that she was maybe separated from the pride maybe she's had cubs and she's been away from the pride and she's trying to relocate them the thing about seeing animals on their own is they're not necessarily on their own they might only be on their own for that moment that we're watching them or for a day or so around that time so to answer your question no, it's not that unusual for a lioness to be on her own she's just not with the pride at the moment and yes, the lioness on her own isn't a very effective cat. And having said that, I've watched lionesses on raising cubs on their own, still heading down Central Road. I'm hoping we can catch up with her because she's walking, she's on a mission. Um, and I've watched different prides of cats, different prides of lion. I've found that occasionally when a pride starts getting a little bit too big for its own good, and I wish that was the case here in the Sabi Sand, I wish we could get to that point in time where we've got lionesses 
having cubs successfully litter after litter and eventually it gets to the point where the pride's a little bit too big and one of the lionesses would then go off and create what we call a splinter group and raise cubs on her own away from the pride and I always thought well, my interpretation of it was that this was a a group of cubs that were not, never destined to be part of the pride this is a the lioness that had decided she's going to raise her cubs and when they get big they're going to go off and become nomadic and start on their own. Oh, a lot of elephant tracks. Can't see our lioness, she might be on this side of the road, on the left. But we're just going to head up Central Road. She was coming through the dip, she was walking up Central Road. Big elephant tracks here. Leopard tracks going the other way. That's confusing, obviously. It looks like one of the boys, definitely one of the boys, going the other way. Which means that this lioness has branched off. Now, whether she went up north to. Oh, I smelt a leopard now. This leopard that was walking here. Sprayed his territory. Yep, line is back on the road heading east. The elephant also heading east, and they're both fresh. And a lot fresher than the leopard heading west. There's Rhino. Oh, that's Shorthorn. I think that's Shorthorn. See what his injury looks like from the time that they were fighting. I want to stop for two minutes, folks, with this Rhino, because. If this cat's walking east, she's probably already up in the cheetah cut line. We might miss her. If it is short one, I don't know if it is. It's this guy with the scrotal hernia. No, I'm joking. He's just got a rather large... He's well endowed. Now I just saw a white on the nose and I thought it's a leaf. I thought it might have been Shorthorn after seeing that fight last time, but it's not him. This is another rhino who's... Quite well might have a scrotal hernia. Uh, station 1 in Combi, Belters Nest Junction, Central Road. Uh, Henry, where are you now? I'm on Chitakatlan, uh, uh, Please check for me at Central Road Junction if that Ngala's coming out there, because she's walking east on Central. Okay, copied. Anything being picked up this morning? Uh, nothing up so far. Okay. There was also a Kwanzo for my daughter Ingwe on Central heading west um, near Gary Cut Line.
he might lose this run if we don't stop and watch him for a bit now. But I'm itching because this cat's walking on the road. And I know that we could lose her. We can try and find him again. He might still be here. Let's just go up Central Road and see what we can see with these lioness tracks. Not to belittle a rhino sighting, it is very, very special. Especially in the current climate of uh, the plight of rhino. I'm leaving lockers, one in Combi on the junction, a central vulture's nest open lock. sleeping here last night. Lady Lura was a lioness who made it for years on her own. I knew a couple of lionesses down in the south part of the Sabi sand back in the 80s. <coughs> they spent most of their life alone with their cubs. I know a lioness. I followed a lioness up in East Africa. In fact a couple in Sulu as well as in Tarangiri National Park. There was one lioness in particular in Tarangiri. It was quite amazing. She was also raising her cubs separate from the pride. I mean, they would join up with the pride occasionally if there was a buffalo kill or something big. <coughs> but generally, they stayed away from the pride. They raised their cubs away from the pride. The lionesses here in the Sabi sand, they actually never joined up with the pride with their cubs. They did on their own. Now, the big question. Did she go up Nala Road North? Did she go straight? Elephant. Elephant still walking on the road heading east. It's not impossible for lions, lionesses to be on their own, and it's not that unusual. There's some soft sand, we might see something. Pardon? What spider? Oh, that the garden orb. You see, I'm not seeing any tracks here now. The elephant was all over the place. There's been some rain here. There's enough rain here to reset the tracks of everything whenever that might have been elephant was after the bit of rain lioness well <coughs> the two elephant now and no sign of my cat go back. She must have gone up towards Bifuzuk Dam. Well, we can 
keep on this way and we'll go around to Buffalzook Dam see if we can find the tracks coming out there. In the meantime, look at these elephant tracks. You can actually smell the rain that was here. It wasn't enough to get even something flowing, you know, not even a, a trickle of water flowing on the ground. But uh, enough to reset the road and the tracks on it. The only thing that's walked here since there was any rain was elephant. Two bulls. Fairly recent. In fact, there's a piece of buffalo thorn in the road there that looks like it was picked about five minutes ago. So we'll put them somewhere here. Past the elephant, they must have moved off the road feeding somewhere. Oh. Further back, where, where I saw that buffalo thorn branch, must be where those elephants are feeding somewhere there. Now. towards snakes have been active I suppose a bit of moisture from this bit of rain and the other thing from this bit of rain are the flies that have come out Squadrons.
most of the cloud is gone. It's a little bit in the northeast. Blue skies above us. Very high moisture to the west. Weather changes are afoot. Spider web tickling my face today. So if you're following us on a map, we seem to have lost her somewhere near Nyala Road North and I think she might have headed north up Nyala Road North, which would bring her out just to the south of Biffleshook Dam. So we're sort of doing a loop around the northeast of the dam, coming in from a different angle. Let's see if she's... Well, for two reasons. Try and get ahead of her if she's still walking on the road. And the other thing is to see if we can isolate where she hasn't been. And then close in on her again. there's a remote possibility she turns south. And I'll only really know that once we get back to Nyala Road North and we don't see anything here. Back towards Central Road again. Well, you know, it might also be a very young male. sign of tracks here.
holding my breath as I come around every bend in the road and now again coming to the dam holding my breath that there's going to be a catch here somewhere but so far not looking like it really weird human tracks that must be a fancy new Nike or something Hello everybody at Bifflesook Dam, everybody and almost nobody. Hi Kingfisher. All the hippos are elsewhere. <coughs> I'm gonna get the kingfisher. That's a pied kingfisher. Strangely enough, cat's just asking what kingfisher is that because normally they're all blue. And I'm just saying that is a pied kingfisher, and you find that the the kingfishers that are feeding on fish are still well, not all of them, but a couple of them are black and white mostly. It helps break up their image coming in from the sun with all the the diffraction of light in water. No, I mean there's the the Malachi kingfisher is blue, feeds on fish. The half coloured kingfisher feeds on fish and it's blue. Can't believe how dirty my glasses are. Now they're nice and clean. But it's not as misty as I thought. Okay, Lioness is waiting for us somewhere. Only she knows where. It's my job to find out. Covered in a black suit. 
the wire. Strange things going on this morning, rather. It caught something, well, it did, yes. Of course, it had to do it now. I want to see what it is. We've caught it and taken it where we can't see it. Oh, it's going, okay, we're going to have to follow it. It's, gone. it's a big fish. Big um, tilapia, and I think it's a bit too big for the kingfish. Let's see if we can get it. I'm thinking that it's gonna uh, take a bit of time to swallow something that size. Of course, we have to. No, it's gone. I don't know. No. Up to the woodlands. Must be up here on the dead tree. Do I need a worry branch fast? No, it's not dead, it's just flown. We dropped it. Where are you can fish it. Yeah. As soon as we take the camera off of it, it catches a fish. There it is. I can just see it beating the fish in the branches. Where those frog nests are, but we can't see it from this angle. Especially because of the light. You can try and go forward and you might be able to get a gap in there. But the angle will be will be slightly at an angle, but maybe we can get it this way. It'll be very bright because of the sunlight coming. I, mean, you know, I can see it from my angle, but oh no, it's a frog. I just saw two legs, but it wasn't a fish. It was a frog. There's a big frog. Can you even see it? No. It's swallowed it already. And just, whoops. Having a swim. We <laughs> tried. uneven ground. tracks here yet see 
too much wasting time. When you're on fresh tracks, you can't stop for things like rhino and kingfishers. Because now the sun's coming up, and that's going to put a cat to ground. That's going to get a cat under a tree, off of the road. It is quite warm already. Uh, lovely days. We might get some cloud build up during the day, and well, every day, hopefully, getting closer to a good rain. One cat track here. toe and a piece of the pad. her she's come here already but she didn't go to the dam and she is heading north so somehow she must have maybe gone up the road I've got to find a place to turn around she must have gone up the road that goes to Chelep to Quarry Pan mmm Lioness has got to be moving today
Then leopard tracks. Gee, leopard tracks going the other way. That would have been the same leopard that was heading west on Central Road and towards the dam. So we know there's one of the boys that headed that way now. Just to find this cat is the main thing, main objective, finding this cat. She came down here. And then, I wonder where she went. Unless she is down here somewhere already. Here there is a path that goes up towards Biffles of Dam, game path. The only option now is to isolate or to rule out that she went towards rule out Gwari Pan. Other than that you're going to have to go back to Biffles of Dam and that means might have instead of coming up onto this road followed the drainage line to Bifflesook Dam and been on the other side the western side of the dam going up towards Bifflesook Cut Line so we want to see if she cut through this drainage line onto this road which is Quarry Pan Road and continued east the general direction has been northeast, but the roads that she's been following are either north, south or east-west roads. So she hasn't really been doing much cutting through the bush. Sorry children, I'm coming through. I'm suddenly starving. No, it's got nothing to do with seeing mongoose that I'm suddenly hungry. I was just suddenly hungry. So yeah, this it's like a black hole in my stomach. It's like hollow. general direction she was walking in. Especially because now we're south of the place that she was walking north on, you know, on the road north. Further east from that point. And this is where the road bends to the east and if there's nothing here then she's on Biffles of Cut Line. Yep. Where are we turning around? Yeah. Oh. That's quite a hole.
I'm back, Mongoose family. Sorry, children, coming through. Yes. Shouted at by Mongoose. Oh, was it you? I thought it was a bit un mongoosey. little spot on the western side of the dam is where I'm hoping she would have come out. Mm, just have to go and check it.
doesn't seem to be any, any sign of her here. She's between the dam and, my guess, she's between the dam and the other road north. My imagination of this Land Rover is bouncing a lot more today. Not my driving either. Let's have a look over this ridge to the east, to the west quickly before we go back east. No cats have been here. Kink. No, it's not. It's Schlegel's blind snake, actually. It's the marbled one. I don't know if we're going to be able to see it. No, no, it's gone into the grasses already. It's trying to. Is that what you saw yesterday on the car? Going, going. Trying to climb up the edge of the road there. And it's gone. Let's see, there's something like that that should be underground. Well, under the surface of the soil. Only out when there's moisture and rain coming. Sorry, couldn't catch it for you get it on camera. Terrapin tracks. Hmm. One thing to find tortoise tracks. Finding terrapin tracks away from a dam. That's something else. This is a hippo path. Are the cat tracks? No, the hippo tracks. No cats. So I think I've isolated where she is. actually more importantly where she isn't yet that kind of points to where she still might be only now I've driven over the tracks that I need to go back to 
I've driven over them twice. And to go back there is driving over them a third time. I'm going to make a finding where she left the road. Very difficult. So we're going to go back to Bethel's Dam. Leopard tracks. That must have been one of the males. It's also fresh.
еще. Ah, back at Pipples of Dam. And we're actually going to have to go down towards Nyala Road North again. Although, I don't know how much good that'll do with, uh, with the cat that's obviously left the road somewhere. Especially now, it's starting to get warm. Mm, I see them, yeah. Trail's gone cold, sort of. She hasn't come out to the dam. She didn't go out onto Gwari Pan Road. So, she's somewhere off Nyala Road North still. Let's head that way. Hello Kingfisher.
see you. I don't know what to do now, I don't know what to say now. We were close on her tail. And I'm pretty sure she's still on Western Gari. Positive.
came down into this dip. It's not here in these long grasses somewhere. Turn around somehow. There's a leopard. There's a leopard. I'm still feeling nuts. Is this Yambilu you're done? But why? And I'm looking for a lioness to find a leopard. He's just gone deep into here. That's a big tom. <sighs> Doesn't make sense. I don't know how we're going to try and get to him, but I will. The way this leopard is moving. Oh, maybe he's just got such big. No, nah, can't be. Can't be. But this is the pathway that goes up here. Hello. Who are you? I'll stop and relax. Sorry, dude. I wonder if this isn't white cross little boy. Not a big leopard. Definitely not confusing lion tracks with this leopard. He's not that big. I think he might. Can't tell really, folks. I'm seeing him, but I'm not seeing who he is. He's not one of our boys, I know that, I can tell you that, that much. Yeah, I think it's white cloths.
having a scratch. Turning around. Anyone copy me? Okay, Kate, can I go? See, now this pathway just ahead of me, a very strong hippo path, elephant living grass is going up. down for me please. That big now that I see the whole of him. He hasn't got a very hasn't got a very heavy doula. If anything I'd say it's maybe Mvula. But Mvula had those big spots on his I don't know. Penny Station, copy me. I've got one ing where I just talked Nala Road North. And he's gone up there for now. He's gone into a very difficult area. Might be coming out onto the road. walking parallel to this road oh there he is, straight ahead of us, on the road very relaxed strong possibility this is Mbula then I mean, yeah Mbula very sparse pattern on the forehead he's not happy though Going back into the thick stuff now. Come through a gap over here. Please stop there. Any station copy me? Air from coming. Yeah, are you reading me? I've got an ingue on Gwari Pan, Nyala Road North Junction. Yeah, 
Uh, please do. Um, not a good visual. Yeah, it's somebody in that quarry thicket. Clever cat, keeping out of our way. All right, we might all be all we see of him. We'll try and go around and see if we can get him around the other side. Give me a chance to see his tracks on the road here. Once upon a time, I mean, leopard and lion tracks are different in that they are shaped different, the toes are different. The, uh, the overall shape of the track is different. And I can't believe that I could make that mistake. I did once upon a time, a long time ago. Have a look at this now. Well, there is a big, that is a big track. But it's definitely not the track, the lioness track that I've been following. This noise is not going to be good. No, can't go forward. He's going up there. He might eventually come out of Biffles of Dam. There he is, and made it ahead of us again. Let me just stop, give him a break. He's big, that must be Mbula. I don't recognize him as Yambilu, I don't recognize him as... Oh, he's not as round as my Fufunyan. Not white cloth, little boy, he's too big for that. Strange, when I saw him, I could just see the top of his head. I could just see the top of his head and his ears when I first stopped with him and I thought, ah, too small to be one of the big boys I'm just letting him relax a little bit, he's hiding behind a bush willow going through a Tambuti ticket.
Con And this would be impenetrable to, on human on foot, let alone in a vehicle. So... There might be an idea later today to try and find him at Biffles of Dam. What I'm going to do is go up to Bori Pan, Central Road, take a look around for those elephants and we'll come back this way, maybe before end of drive, if we can, otherwise we'll come back in the afternoon. Doesn't make sense. Following lion tracks, finding a big male leopard. Doesn't make sense that the leopard is walking where I expected to find a lioness walk. I think I've got a photo of the top of his head I can post for you to ID I don't think it's as far down as his eyes A nice shot of the back of him And Oh, it is a nice shot of I've got a When he turned around I wasn't sure if I got it. it, might not be clear, it might be a bit blurry. This little thing takes really nice shots from time to time, especially the, the macro stuff, but sometimes this kind of shot doesn't ever come out clear. Let's see. Oh, that might work. Lighten it up a bit. It'll be a little bit blurry, but you can see his eye pattern. I'm sure some of you ladies will be able to ID him.
person leaving the locket is Ingwe. He's in the drainage line, just north of Nyala Road, North Junction with Quarry Pan Road. He might be going up to Pickles of Dam. Cloud, where did you come from? Keeps the leopard walking, hiding the sun away. It has moved in pretty quickly. In fact, it's moved in in the time that we saw the leopard. So suddenly we've got cloud, cloud cover. Front moving in. Anyone's awake yet in the UK? Oh, daylight savings started yesterday. Does it? Um, one hour ahead behind. For those of you North America, you're one hour closer to us now. So means. I suppose that means it's later for you. midnight already in some places east coast two o'clock in the morning maybe in New York Europe we must be around about the same time starting the day starting the week anybody in Europe out there Morning Jody. Midnight for Jody, I guess. New Mexico. Now starting at 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. New Mexico. What is your time, New Mexico? Central time.
Santa Mary, and Vancouver Island, Pacific time, 11 p.m. there. Nine hour difference. Two raindrops up here on Chile Catan. I'm going to go up to the top corner and we'll come back again. Let's go up to it was a cut line corner and then come back. So I've done a lot of driving but we have managed to see a leopard and a, and a rhino. It's quite amazing. And would love to have spent more time with both. Leopard, we couldn't help it. I don't quite understand the whole daylight savings thing. Well, I do sort of, but I understand why people get confused. But you see, I think I'm entitled to get confused because we don't have it. We're a very wide country and theoretically we should have at least two time zones in this country. Cape Town should be an hour behind us. But I think it would just cause so much havoc if they suddenly introduced something like that. If I'm not mistaken, they tried to do that in Namibia once. set the clock back. Everybody ignored it. Didn't work. A lot of monarchs up here. Monarch butterflies. Look at that there. Half a dozen in the road ahead of us. They all got a very heavy, lazy flight. I wonder why. Mating, perhaps. Hello, flutter buyers. Many of you. What are you all on about? Anybody? I mean, with a dozen butterflies flying around, you think at least one of them would sit on my hand? Must be the scent of a female's pheromones. Attracting a whole lot of males. Here's my lioness. Walking south. If it's the same lion. There wasn't anything further south from here. This kind of ties in with... Yep. The... See, very... Egg-shaped toes. As opposed to the leopard that's got very round toes. And the actual shape of the line track is egg-shaped. I'd love to show you, but we just don't have the light for it right now. We need the sunshine. So, a button on my toe. She must have gone into Torchwood. Yeah, it must have come up the fire break. Crossed, somehow crossed through Biffles of Dam from Nyala Road North. Obviously a different time frame to this leopard. I'm sure if we could, we'll find her tracks up the fire break. 
Oh wait, hang on a sec, what's this here? Heading north. No, that's all. It's probably this leopard we saw heading north. I don't quite get it because when we came onto Cheetah Cut Line there weren't any tracks on Pipeline Road where Gwari Pan is. Now I'm guessing she would have come up. Maybe the fire break. Doesn't look like it. matter where she came onto the road but she came onto the road and she was heading south Most monarchs I've seen in one little spot. It's almost like our own little mini migration. A lot of dancing. This is what they're doing at the moment. They're dancing. And this is all we've got to do with mating. It's a much heavier flight. More wing. It's more about wing displays than flying from A to B. I can't really focus on one, I'm afraid. I'm just having a look to see what it looks like. Well, oh, it's elephant herd just crossing the road up ahead, coming on to Western Gauri. Gee, there was a buffalo at Gauri Dam, rhino, now elephant and leopard. We've had four of the big five this morning. There's more elephant crossing the road up ahead. They're all going to Buffalzook. A long way before. Before they get to, or a long time before they get there. We already had a herd a family group crossing here where I am now. This is another group. Here comes a big one. Let's wait here until the big ones come through. Hello children. Is that a big that looks like it could be a big bull coming through. Very big bull. Following the family. It's a big matriarch, she's very big, she's huge. I just saw the back of her. I normally make a mistake between bulls and cows. She's big, she's just really big for a lady. Now we just need that lioness to make it the big fire for the morning. Some being to the cut line.
Henry, come in. Now, I've got a slumber in Dlov on Cedar Coast Line near Pipeline. Also had my daughter Ingwe down on Gwari Pan Road where the other road north comes into it. He, but he went into the drainage line. He might come out at Bifuzuk Dam. Okay, copy. Thank you. And I'm still trying to find this Mafaz and Gala because now I found them Konzo on Cheetah Cut Line heading south. Okay, copy, copy. You, you didn't find anything on Cheetah Cut Line? Uh, no, Jed, I just uh, straight up way from Guadalupe Road to the north. I didn't find uh, more south. But from Guadalupe Road to the north? So you didn't see Herm Konzo on the junction with Firebreak on Cheetah Cut Line? Okay, copy. Now then she must be on top of your Herm Konzo. Strange. That must be quite recent this lioness was walking there on Cheetah Cut Line because Henry said he was here. And bye. thick here to be following these alleys. They've gone into this. This is quite a dense area of low scrub, low round leaf teak that the elephants keep pretty low. Whoa. That is one huge hole. That's almost like the whole Patrick fell in. Sure. Um, and we can watch her from here for a bit. trunk there, spider web here. Sorry. Geo. Yeah, see now they're moving. We'll pick them up on we might be able to follow them to the dam and we might be able to see leopard at the same time because that hole is behind us. Uh -huh. Henry didn't see that lion trap. We're just going to go down towards Central Road. Elephant are crossing through quite a thick section of the block. And it'll take them a while to come out onto that road that goes down to 
Biffles are damn. We'll give them a bit of time to do that. In the meantime, we'll just head a little bit further south from where we came out. See, the tracks aren't here. Nobody's driven here. Just in case she was walking off the road and she came back onto the road. We'll go down towards Central Road. Come back again. That might be Henry coming up now. Just have a quick word with him. Maybe Ephraim. But it's not the same that comes from quarantine. Yeah, the same one. Okay, she came Nyala Road North. Yeah, I can see. Henry is finding cones again that time. Yeah, and I saw the cones are there now on the junction with fire break. She did that line. Yeah, it's going to be the same. Yeah. There is. So that, that, you'll see when my tracks leave the road, that some and are heading down towards... Yamati? Yeah, well, they're going to take some time. I just thought I'd come down here and look for more tracks. Okay. And I think that's Mvula there. He's also going to come out at Bipples up there. Mvula? Yeah. Oh, okay. Which way? Are you going down Pipeline? Yeah. Okay. Okay, There, I've been on this track the whole day and they've were following the tracks into Torchwood. What we have here is a failure to communicate. The radios are not working too well. Okay, time to go back towards Biffles of Dam. We'll do, since Ephraim's been here on the cut line, we'll go back down to Drakensburg Road Drive. Drakensburg Drive Road. Well, Ephraim's just come out of Torchwood. Let me go a little bit further down, Cheetah Cut Line. Because there were those two bulls that were coming east along. Actually, I've just been over some fresh dung. Could have been them. There were two bulls that were heading east from. Central Road. I guess I've been a bit like a kid in a kid in a candy shop today. It's too much happening at once, not being able to concentrate on one solid thing. Can't choose what to do. Fun while it lasted, wasn't it? Following lion tracks.
Oh, uh, the monarchs, yeah, that whole road got them, and they, they're flattering, bye. Another dozen monarchs all flitting lazily. Also known as the milkweed butterfly. The larva of the monarchs feeding on milkweed, gomphocarpus, other plants with the poisonous sap or poisonous latex makes the monarchs very distasteful. Not only unpalatable but inedible. And every now and then amongst the monarchs you will find a butterfly that is known as a variable mimic. And it is able to mimic the coloration of the monarch. It doesn't feed on milkweed. I'm not I can't remember what the host plant is, the larval host plant of the mimic. But it is a very palatable butterfly. But to get away with being palatable it looks like the monarch. And actually one of the only ways to tell are the spots on the body of the monarch. The monarchs have white spots all over their bodies. Mimics don't. Other butterfly that the mimics mimic, the butterfly known as a friar. Black and white. Also a distasteful butterfly to birds. getting crazy.
very little stand buck. Didn't mean to give you a fry. I am driving slowly. We haven't been seeing stand buck much lately. I don't know if she goes in or not. That's a young male. What's your problem? Gee. That's a bit weird. Did a couple of circles. I think it was a young male. I think I saw some little horn buds there. No. Yeah, I do. Very young male. That's why it's so skittish. I think he'll stay there for us. Can you see him through there, cat? Hmm? No. Half an inch of a horn at the back of his head there. Well, not back, but I mean just in front of his ears. Just make out little horn buds. It was hard to see when he was running. It's a lot easier to see now that he's finally calmed down a little bit. His mum must be here somewhere. He's only a few months old. Five or six months, maybe. I'm not too sure of the rate of growth of the horns on a stenbuck. We don't get to see them growing up as much as we do things like impala. They are quite secretive. But at the height of summer, from the height of summer through into winter, when the grasses are very, very long like this, we just don't get to see them much. And that would be our smallest antelope here. In at Jumagay Reserve. Not the smallest in Africa, but the smallest that we get here. Let's go see if we can see these alleys. We'll leave this little boy. Oh, Stan Becky. By now the elephants should have come out onto the road leading down to Bifelzook Dam. Various names for that road. Hippo Pass Road, Hippo Walk-Up Road, Hippo... Well, it's not the Mbubu Road. Let's just call it the road that goes down to Bifelzook Dam. The other one. Not the Gwari Pan one, the other one. They must be there by now, making their way to the dam, um, putting in their heads that they're thirsty and they're hot and they want to have a splash. I think it was a rare morning 
that we got to see more than the vehicles that went on to Torchwood and Biffles. No tracks on the road, so I don't think I've come through to the road yet. time to get to the dam. They're still there already, they could have come through the bush. I half expected them to come out onto this road and then walk down the road to the dam. But you can't expect animals to do anything. I mean there's no such thing as expect expecting. It's like I expected to find a lioness walking on the road in front of us this morning. She must have been do, walking that way, must have been walking a lot earlier than I thought. And the tracks were quite fresh, but it was a very still evening, morning. It wasn't a breath of wind. The tracks will stay fresh, especially because a little bit of humidity in the air keeps the sand grains stuck together. Keeps the tracks fresher for longer. And now for the nth time we approach Bipplesook Dam. What's well, about the fourth time this morning? I think something like that. Elephants haven't got here yet. They're not likely to be here in the next few minutes I don't think oh there are elephants here <laughs> seems I'm wrong on so many accounts this morning that must be who they are they've been here already on the damn wall some of them already wet oh boy I guess look 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 at that sliding down that very 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 steep bank she's on her knees why they have to go down the steep side like that i don't know we have to go the other side cat the rest of them are going to follow I, I i don't even think us as humans could walk down there we would just have to slide down on our back or back sides oh, i'm just going to stretch for a drink there 
very deep there. So they're just stretching. Well, I don't know where they came through from because they didn't walk down the road. Maybe we dawdled too long on Drakensberg, went too far south on Cheetah Cut Line. It's becoming a regular occurrence now, finding Ellie's at the end of drive. Okay, let's go find them. Or keep up with them. Hello everybody. Just drinking and sand bathing and Somebody's rubbing against the tree. Well, no, what it is is kicking up sand. That's what they're doing. Another family group. This is actually, I think, a different group because they're coming in from the other side of the dam. Big lady coming through there now, trying to push her way through. Uh-oh, baby, careful, you're going to slip in. And big sister's just helping little one. All these sticks that are in the way. They're all trying to squeeze into one tiny little spot. Why don't you come here, little one? Come around this side. You can get right in. Look at this. All trying to squeeze in, and there's just too many elephants for that tiny little, one tiny little place to squeeze in to drink. And this is where we were watching the kingfisher where it caught the frog earlier today. I suppose if we did that more often, drive around in circles, keep coming back to the same point, we're bound to find something new. One of them 
venturing into the water. Feeling the ground with the trunk. There we go. Babies there. Time to little ones have a swim. Again. Once one goes in, then the rest can follow. <laughs> oh, that's just too wonderful. You don't often get to see the females and the calves all climbing into the water. That's just a bubbling, boiling, massive elephant. I don't think they'd ever do this when, if there were bulls around. They wouldn't dare let the bulls see them having fun. Can I turn, Kat? Sorry? Uh, do we need to maybe turn facing them a bit more? Are you okay? This little one's going to get squashed in there. Where'd the little one go? <laughs> this is too wonderful. Just when you think you've seen the best of valleys in the water, you just get something different. I still want to know where that little one is. Oh, there, I saw a tiny little trunk in the middle. There's the little trunk sticking up. <laughs> Mom, it's holding on to Mom's trunk. Look at the poor little thing. Cat, we need to go back. Oh, they're like a pod of dolphins and whales. They just
I just love bubbling and, and splashing and oxygenating the water. One of those big ladies right on her side, two of them on their sides, almost rolling right over. It must be so great for them to be able to take the weight off their feet when they're in water. Elephants are positively buoyant, in other words they do float, they have a large enough lung capacity that they, it keeps them afloat, which means that when they're out of their depth they have to swim, as opposed to hippos who ordinarily would be running along the bottom. Hippos are negatively buoyant, they stay on the bottom and they've got to push off and come up for air. So when elephants are in water and they're able to take the weight off of their legs and it must be quite an amazing feeling for an elephant. I've got to be an elephant one day. Maybe I was already once upon a time. <laughs> now I have one family of very, very clean elephants. And they're going to go out and dirty themselves now, probably. Looks like they're going to make their way to the other side of the dam. We can move again. We can get above them on the dam wall. Yeah. Although the light's not going to be great. This is still the best light that we've got. I can move, make it a little bit better. Oh, sorry.
No, they're going to get out there. By the time we get around there, they'll be out already. Okay, you can try. <laughs> this is too wonderful. Pardon? Okay, they might still play a little bit. What I found quite amazing was it was almost like a mom and child human where mom's holding little one's hand when they were all in the water. Little one and mother were constantly in touch with each other with their trunks. In fact, she sort of had her trunk curled out and he had his little trunk over hers. It was very touching. Oh, hello. You're missing the fun, madam. Sorry, girl. See, now we can't go anywhere. Hello, Mrs. Ellie. Are you the one that we saw coming across cut line, I think? She's dawdling. She's running to catch up with the herd. One left over there. Any others behind us? Oh, something was in here, just to the left of her. That calf startled something. Um, might have been an antelope. The other day we saw a nice big kudu bull here. I don't think it would be leopard. I saw some bushes move in here, and the little one was startled by something. They're still playing. They, they're doing the rounds of the whole dam. <laughs> Good oxygenation of the water here. This is a nice angle. We get the silvery sheen on all the bubbles. Hopefully we more or less level. All coming out now on the left. They're going to come onto the road and have a dust bar. Oh, Starling, yes, watch the elephants, don't watch me. Oh. Rumbles. Let's go back okay? to the road. Just too full of energy, young lady. I think she's that's what it is. She's waiting. Where's the baby? That's what she's worried about. Worried about little one. 
And it's probably just a little sister, a little brother. Another young female that's very worried. What's wrong, young lady? Oh, they've split up a bit. Some of them are still down at the water. Some of them have moved off into the bush already. I do want to see where that little... Very light. I don't think the little one came, came out yet. One of the females has crossed the road already. There's a female at the back, her right tusk points downwards. I wonder if she's not the same genes, same family as that big cow with the tusk that points down. Maybe the same mother, same father. There, that one just coming into the road now. That lady there. Right tusk point downwards. I'm not my little one must be little one must be off to the the side already. Well with the elephants disappearing we're gonna disappear too. Uh, it's been a wonderful morning been quite exciting actually and bodes well for this afternoon. I'm Mark, Cat's been on camera, Craig in final control and from all of us here at Wild Earth Safari, I hope you're going to join us later, I hope you have a wonderful day, good luck for the week and we'll see you, see you later, bye for now.